Hey everybody, welcome back. Mob Vlog, Adam Flowers here, and today we're going to be talking about the Eminem murders, Jimmy Maraglia and Billy McCarthy. Uh, that's our that's our subject matter today. And I did a little trip back to Chicago and I visited uh, Disorderly Product News. Uh, Disorderly Product News had a a lot to do with the success in uh, uh, of of the channel uh, Coffee with Colada growing uh, because it was just kind of ticking along until this guy contacted me and said, hey, I want to help you and help your channel grow and get more people out there on it. So he gave me some great tips. We're going to have him on. I'm going to show you guys a, a quick video um, before we get him on and give you, give you an idea of who he is in case you don't know who DPN is already because you got to go check out his channel. Uh, so welcome back, guys. Mob Vlog. Here we go. My name is Disorderly Product News from YouTube. I'm here with Adam, coffee from Coladas. So uh, this is a very famous corner. If you look behind, this is Nooch Lombardo's house. Uh, he, Nooch Lombardo is Joey the Clown Lombardo's. You're all familiar with uh, brother. Nooch had, he was the nicest guy in the world. He had silver, salt and pepper hair, slick back, tan all year round, had a white Cadillac that he parked right there. Uh, uh, track suit zippered down to right here with a gold chain. Uh, kitty corner to the house right here. Uh, that was uh, the Builders Social Club, Joey Andriaki. So uh, I was going to school. My grandma was picking me up for school in 1996. I went to school in Chicago. So uh, as she's picking me up, it's about probably like 7:30 in the morning, and we're, I'm coming out of my house. And I look across the street, and there's yellow, the yellow FBI jackets. You guys all know the famous yellow FBI jackets with the black FBI writing in the back. They're all in the social club at 7.30 in the morning, bringing the guys that I saw every day growing up uh, out of the social club at 7.30 in the morning. So I don't know if they're out there all night gambling, but that, that was kind of like the beginning of the end as far as uh, this is Elmwood Park. Uh, commonly known sometimes Taylor Street is more widely known as Little Italy in Chicago but this kind of took over that name after uh, Italians started migrating out of the city into this neighborhood and this is Elmwood Park where is where uh, the Eminem murders the Scavo brothers got killed uh, on that on the north side of Elmwood Park over here and then the head and the vice all that it, it's just like a movie if you ever saw a Bronx tale I mean there was characters there's always characters so there was this there was this guy that would sit up there when i was young playing football in front here uh and uh if you ever saw those you went to a deli and you see ham right in the netting on the ham and the, the fat of the ham is poking through this guy had to be about 600 pounds and he had these gold bracelets and gold watches on and they were so tight around his wrist and then all you would see is the fat popping out on each side after the gold and that's what reminded me of the ham when i was little and he'd be out there with uh, he's 600 pounds, but he would have his uh, mirror and he'd be tanning on his lawn chair right there against the building, all, tanning all day long. I mean, it, it, there was characters everywhere. And so that was Joey Andriaki's building. And uh, they, they use social clubs. Anybody that knows anything about the mob, you got to tell you guys anything, but they use social clubs as a place to hang out. And that was a social club in the neighborhood. That was Joey the Builders, Andriaki, Newt Lombardo lived right here. And uh, Arab. The, the police would be over here, right? If they were watching Nucha's house or if they were watching the social club, they would be on diversity. As do, I'm sure. So, uh, anyhow, where are you from? What area? Uh, Elmwood Park. Okay. Elmwood Park is, uh, is the epicenter of uh, the outfit, the Chicago outfit, which is the nickname for the mafia in Chicago. And you grew up, like... Next door to Nooch Lombardo, which was Joe Lombardo, as they got every clip here that I played in the beginning that we shot while we were uh, I was in Chicago with you. But the uh, um, that whole area and that whole life that you grew up around, uh, what I mean, you obviously were right there in it when you were growing up. But tell me, what was it like? I I mean, it was it was normal until you until you grow up and you realize everybody's life wasn't like that. But it wasn't. I mean, I didn't see murders. Like I told you, Neutral Lombardo was the nicest guy in the world, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
Now there was there was things that would happen with my dad, and my dad's the nicest. My dad was the nicest guy in the world. Uh, he, he's, I think he got into an accident, and Nooch and the guys came over and said we're going to take care of that. And my mom came running out and said, "Absolutely not! We don't want none of that." But um, besides that, I mean, it, it was it was normal until you grow up and you realize that the people that you knew were on the FBI's most wanted list, or they had a torture room in their basement. But that was the thing about the outfit that was different than gangs. And they could uh, assimilate in society and be normal and be gentlemen. And then you hear these things about them, uh, uh, your, your, your uncle's friend or whatever, whoever, people that you knew and friends of your family and that were just like, oh, my God, they did that? Like those really, really nice old men did that? You know, so it, 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 I think that's a different, um, a different type of, uh, uh, the, 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 what's different with the mafia and the street gangs and cartels. And they live this, uh, double, double lifestyle. Yeah. It seems like they all had it like a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, you know, uh, even, uh, you know, Frank would say Tony Spilatro was, you know, it's great family guy making his son pancakes in the morning making him breakfast to little league uh on our tour out here in vegas the house where they filmed the movie casino the owners of it uh the the lady she was a house mom and, and with tony spilatro and said tony was the nicest guy uh, you know, and he was, uh, he was great. You know, he brought the, you know, when kids had their birthdays, he'd bring all the cupcakes in and stuff, you know, and then at the same time, this is the same guy who's sticking somebody's head in the vice to get a, yeah. to get a name, right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And that's, I mean, you really, that's why you really couldn't tell. And the reason why the Eminem murders happened is because, uh, they killed him in Elmwood Park where, and they killed him on the north side of Elmwood Park where the majority of the soldiers lived. Uh, the bosses and stuff lived in the next town over, which is River Forest and Oak Park. That's where Paul Rica's house was. Uh, we went to what's his name's house, uh, Tony Accardo's house, Sam mm -hmm. Giancana's house. Th those were next door. But where I'm from is where all the soldiers and I lived in the epicenter of it. And not to just to say I lived around there. Uh, when we met Joey, uh, Frank's brother, I got out of the car because you were going to come with me. And I said, what's up, Joey? And I told him who I was. And he looked at me. And you, I mean, you could vouch for it. He, he knew who I was. And my family had sent their regards. So uh -huh. not, only, not only did I just live in the neighborhood, my family was knew these people. And we were all friends. Right. Not that I was friends with Joey. Joey was a lot older than me. Frank's brother is obviously a lot older than me. But he knew my when I said who I was, he knew, he knew, he knew who family. I was. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. And so, I mean, you're only one person away from all of, all of these guys. Uh, yeah. You've even interviewed, you've even done some interviews on your, uh, on your channel with, uh, with, uh, Frank, uh, uh, Frank, Frank Calabrese. Yeah. Yeah. You had Frank Calabrese on and, uh, and a matter of fact, that was because I was going to, we were going to have you and Frank Collada do an interview and we really tried to work it out, really did, right? Uh, but but there was this incident, you might say, that, <laughs> that was, you took was like just, a, you took it the, totally the wrong way. <laughs> but, well, yeah, we could. Yeah, it was the it was the it was the. If you ever watch, it's one of his. If you ever watch the uh, Coffee with Colada, the old the his Frank's interviews, there was one where he says a YouTuber trying to live my life and he was talking about me because yeah. in the video with me and frank uh frank talked about how his dad was driving past a car wash and from uh tony Splatcher owned a car wash right across the street from his house him and his brother had a, a two flat uh they lived in the, they lived in the same building um and they owned a car wash on harlem and his dad and frank calabrese's dad who was uh a made member in the Chicago outfit and one of the guys in the family secrets trial uh, uh, was driving past and he saw Tony Spilatro in a fight with a lot bigger guy because Tony Spilatro was Joe Pesci's height. Mm -hmm. he, and he was stabbing him with a pen. And then, you know, 
if you watch Coffee with Claudia, you know Frank said that told Martin Scorsese, dude, Martin Scorsese, do you, says, do you have any other ways that people were killed? Interesting ways, and he says, yeah, uh, I I saw a guy killed with a pen in Stateville, or what's his name, the big lurch guy, Larry Newman, yeah, Larry, Larry Newman, Newman stabbed somebody with a pen, and so he heard me and Frank talking about that pen incident in which Frank Caleb Reese saw Tony Spilacho stabbing a guy with a pen. In the car wash, and, to- and uh, Frank's dad pulled over and asked if he needed any help. And Tony said, no, just go. Don't worry about it. And he said, well, that didn't happen. And my story is the story that's correct. You know, Frank, even though when he got older, he didn't get mellower. Right? He stayed <laughs> he stayed, he stayed hot-tempered. So he thought oh, yeah. we were stealing his story. Oh, yeah. And, and then there was no way we were going to do the interview because people were hyping me up and be like, don't take that from him. He was nothing he did that you didn't do. Uh, no, I didn't kill anybody. But still, at the same time, it, it, and, and I told you, I'm like, dude, just, we'll get into it. It'll be like a WWF thing. Like, you know, catch, yeah. catch for yourselves. And you're like, no. Because I now that I see it now, I'm like, no, he would have went at Adam. He'd been like, why would you put that mother cox on the phone with me? Yeah, why would you do yeah. that? Why do I get Yeah, I knew you would have took the heat for it. So. Yeah, I see why it didn't happen now, but yeah, that yeah, that, that he, interview never happened. Yeah, he, you know, I threw a few ideas out there, like, "Hey, let's do this. This would be funny," you know. Like, what if, what if I like play like I act like I played a prank on you, and then you, you know, and he's like, "What do you mean you played a prank on me?" He's like, the "Hell no!" <laughs> and I said, "Okay, well, how about you know you play a prank on me, like you, you know?" And, and <laughs> he prank, wasn't much for pranks, dude. Prank, no, 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 no. no, 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 no we we're gonna call it dodging the ice pick. Yeah, dodging the ice pick. Yeah, dodge the ice pick again. Dodging the ice pick. Right? It's the yeah, exact where, idea. Where I he didn't like that, but <laughs> yeah, Adam would do practical jokes on him, oh, and the segment no, no, would be no, called no, dodging no. the ice pick. Yeah, not, to see not if he. Cool. Yeah, no. Yeah, he uh, didn't want those jokes are done at all. So he uh, wasn't. Yeah. Hey, uh, Universal oh. Options. Rocco Lombardo is alive and well. He runs a karate shop in Vegas. Is that the is that the one of the other brothers? I must be one of the other brothers. I'm guessing. Nooch is Rocco Lombardo's. Nooch is Bardo. Bung's brother. Who, who, oh, no, he's saying that. The, what's Nooch, the order Rocco of the Lombardo? That's his really his name, Rocco Lombardo. Oh, oh Rocco's Nooch's Nooch, 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 Nooch his real name is Rocco? He's saying he's still alive. Is he? He, was, he said he was pinched in a money scandal years back, and guess who his federal lawyer was for that case? Tony Spilatro's nephew. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And wait, he runs universal a, he, options. He, he runs a karate place in Las Vegas? That's what he says. Yeah. Oh, ask him what the karate place is. You got to get him on. He's got stories. Right. Nooch has got stories. Nooch, yeah, Nooch is that, a character. That would be awesome, right? Nooch yeah, is what, a character, dude. <laughs> what's the name of the karate shop if you uh, universal options? Google it right now. Okay. So <laughs> um, it can't be that hard to find. Right, right. Yeah, Nooch is a... I can't believe Nooch is still alive. Nooch is a character. Um, All martial art supplies? Hero. Anyway, to look into this. Yeah. And he said he's not going to talk. I think of it. <laughs> no, no, he might talk. Like, yeah, yeah, you don't give up before you try. Right, right. Yeah, you never know. You never know. I mean, so. uh, people will talk to an extent. Like, I can't, there's there's things that obviously I'm not going to say, but uh, there's a lot of things you can say, right? People are interested. Well, people sure. People are interested in the mob, right? They're interested the in little that story. That whole, yeah. Man, it's a yeah. whole era is a, it's a fascinating, it's a fascinating subject. You know, I mean, okay. it, yeah. the town was just like, just like Chicago was run, Vegas was run by them. Um, if, if, if they were still running Chicago, it wouldn't be the, 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 the stuff that's happening in Chicago would not be happening. Oh, the talking, like the murders the gangs, stuff? The, yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's, then again, when they were in control, there was a murder every other, you know, day. Yeah. So, so, yeah. So back yeah. to the, to the Scalvo brothers. So that night, and that was, this is all the way back in 1962 that, uh, that, uh, this, this occurred. And Frank could have been in on it. Um, could have, could have, it could have happened uh, that he would have taken, uh, partaken in this, uh, but he he didn't. 
Uh, he mm -hmm. was out with Billy and Jimmy. They wanted to go kill the Scavo brothers, and they went to Frank. He was at a, a bowling alley, if I remember correctly, and they said, come on, you know, let's let's." Do this. And he said, no, you said the guns are over here. And they went for the guns, and he didn't leave because he was interested in a girl that night and more interested in going and hanging out with them. Thank God for him. And, Thank God, uh, yeah. Right. He said he was driving to the hotel with this girl and he stopped to get gas. He heard a pop, 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 pop. Right. And then saw the car with Jimmy and Billy going by. So, yeah. Um, and then the next day heard on the news, these guys have been killed, which is a big no, no, because they're, they're made guys. And you don't just go around made guys unless you want to end up dead. So, yeah. 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 So it's a. So how did do you know exactly how exactly did it start between them? So I, you know, I, I don't know that they were made guys. I know that the bar that they ran was an outfitted bar that was owned by Paul Rica, that he had uh, uh, put money into it. Now, they may have been my, uh, made guys. I'm not sure if they were or not. But they were definitely plugged in straight with Paul Rica, who was uh, Al Capone's wheel man. He went back to the Capone era. And uh, they owned a bar on Mannheim. And Mannheim was a seedy area. Right, Mannheim is where um, they had a lot of the motels you could rent by an hour. They had the porn shops. Um, they had the stripper strip clubs, and those are the type of places that the mob would um, go after because they're right on the edge of legality. Right, so they don't really have the option to run to law enforcement because they really don't want them there anyways. They're just getting them for taxes, right? So they would go after, the, the mob would go after places like that, porn shops, uh, uh, strip clubs. So they probably had a lot of business to do on Mannheim. And um, they got into a fight somehow, the two of them. And I think uh, the Scavo brothers got the better of uh, Eminem, McCarthy, and Maraglia. And... Uh, McCarthy couldn't let it go, and he had followed him a couple nights. It was there, there, there was a couple nights it was supposed to happen, and he had followed him a couple nights. But they had a girl in the car with them because they used to take a waitress home from um, the bar. And then I think like on the third night or the second night, don't quote me, that they he, he just got sick of the girl was always going to be there, so they just did it. And we got the footage because you could still we you can compare it. Because all the houses are still the same. You could compare it from um, the newspaper article where the cars crashed into the house. And I want to say it's a girl leaning out the back of the seat. And we had the exact the exact picture and the exact photograph of where the car crashed. Because it was a long, it was probably like a 10 or 15 minute chase, you know, in which they were chasing um, the Scalvo brothers. And I'm assuming they didn't have a gun on them. You know, why would you if you're just getting off work at the end of the night running a bar? Why would you be carrying a gun in your car? Yeah, very uh, true. So they're just trying to get away from them. And they ended up uh, crashing into that wall, which is a famous picture that was in the newspaper. And then we went right to the spot where the – there it is right there. And, uh, yeah. And pulled it so up. We, you can see her kind of hanging out of the uh, – Yeah. 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 Or, her body. Oh, Ross Stan Stanger. Imagine that. <laughs> Ross has everything. Oh, you know him? There we go. Uh, he, he has some Pinterest boards and, and different uh, groups that he has and photos in. But, yeah, there it is. And there were the three houses in the background, which this yeah. one now has a big giant tree in front of it. But, yeah, we stood yeah. right there and saw where they came into that cul-de-sac area. Not cul-de-sac, but that that uh, uh, intersection and uh, yeah. stop hit that uh, wall there. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have that video? I do. I do have that video. Um, I am, I am thinking that I'm thinking that I have it. Let me take a look here. Let me share video file. I mean, if you don't have it set up, don't worry about it. Um, But yeah, you no, know, we stood in that exact I, I spot. 
I, yeah, I don't, I don't want to play it without viewing it first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I may say you're, you know, or you may, I may show something that we don't want to, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. yeah, yeah. So, so I, yeah. I gotta check that before I would play it. But, um, but yeah. So we stood right there, saw the whole thing where where it took place. Now, after this incident, after they killed, them, that's when the bosses were like, uh, uh-uh, this is time you know to to this these guys have to be taken care of and tony spilatro saw that as an opportunity to uh to ma- make his bones you might may say right and yeah, yeah. Uh, you know be endeared to the outfit and uh so anyway he went and got uh at frank and this is one of the murders that frank was indirectly involved with although although by the way he did testify against tony frank did about this and it was thrown out of court. So if that, I, you know, I'm not saying I don't believe Frank. I'm just saying it's a fact that it, it got thrown out of court. But then again, Tony had so many things thrown out of court. Key witnesses disappeared right before they were supposed to testify. And all kinds of things went on yeah. uh, around yeah. him. That list is long. Uh, yeah. but, but he looked at it as an opportunity and Frank set up Billy. And they grabbed Billy at the chicken shack. Right. And then, or he met at the chicken, yeah, chicken shack. And then they uh, threw him in the car. I think Saint was one of them. Vincent and Sir. And so, Sir yeah, yeah. Saint, Saint was one of them. Yeah. Right. And was, Tony was there. And I don't know. Was, was There was a, one other guy. I think there was three of them that did this. But, but what, what was it? What, what, but what was not, uh, it was, uh, was, was Man Sam not there to, I mean, not to, uh, he wasn't there at the chicken shack and stuff, but did he help torture him? I don't think so. I don't think that he was actually there for that. I think that that was just, uh, you know, I think that was Tony. Um, I think it was just Tony, uh, you know, his learning from Mad Sam, which, yeah. again, you know, everybody thinks, too, that Tony was taught everything by Sam Stefano, And I'm sure he learned some things, but really who he was under first was uh, Phil Alderisio, Milwaukee Phil, who yeah. really – that's who really showed Tony who you know how to yeah. how to get information and all right so yeah and Chicago was known more than New York or anywhere else for torture right mm-hmm. and uh, the, one of the famous ones was uh, who's the fat guy that they Jackson put on the Jackson hook? yeah so oh man but come they, on like go ahead they put a hook in his rectum and hung him. Yeah, and then and he, beat him and hit him in a in, 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 with an ice pick in every you know place possible that you could think of, and for three days, for he three expired days. from he expired from pain. I uh, listen. I heard that they put one of those you know those thin glass tubes that you have in like science uh, class. They put it in no, the, the hole uh, of his is his, his, uh, his his penis, and then. Then the glass is in the hole of his penis, and they took both hands and clapped on either side with his, you know. Oh you know, man, come on! <laughs> so, not- so anyway, but he expired from. But what the, the thing was, Action Jackson. They said it was a. Um, uh, they said that they thought he was a informant. Now I don't believe they ever thought he was an informant. That's like the Chicago was smart in the sense that. They had one boss for years, decades. The the Tony Accardo never spent a day in prison, mm-hmm. and if it wasn't him, it was Paul Rica, and they were right, real close. So unlike New York, uh, where they had five families with different bosses constantly, you're talking about one family with the same uh, boss for you know fifty years. So, uh. They put the story out there that they thought he was an informant. But I think he messed around and raped or had something to do with a maid man or associate's wife. But they always wanted to get the most bang for their buck. So they tortured people so they didn't have to kill. They tortured one guy so they didn't have to kill 30. Who the hell wants to be tortured? You get one put in the back of your head, then... You know, maybe you you sell a little dope on the side and stuff like, you know, you take the chance. But it, it, it's hard to be like, dude, you got I don't want to get stuck on a hook for three days, you know. And make, yeah, make an example out of one and, yeah. and scare the hell out of everybody else. 
you know, and and then and then make it say say he think we think he was an informant. Now no one's gonna inform. In fact, right. like the the first made man to inform on the Chicago outfit was uh, Frank's uncle. Uh, Frank Calabrese's uncle, uh, Frankie, uh, 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 Nikki Slim Calabrese, and that was in the Family Secrets trial, and that was in like 2004. Yeah. So, the, I mean, they they were masters at what they did, right? Chicago, as far as people not ratting and, and using techniques so people didn't rat, right? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And 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 you know the other thing is. Think think about this because they're they're you know dropping money out on the street doing their uh, loan sharking, and if you if 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 it makes it in the news that something like this happened that these guys you know tortured this guy for three days you know because he was an informant you know they could use that and say hey where's the money this week you know you want to end up like that. You mean oh, oh, yeah. easier to get their money, you know? So it's like, everything, it's yeah, to, yeah. It's 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 At, it's control. It keeps everybody in line. Like it, it may seem sadistic, and it was sadistic, but there was I guarantee you there was fifty guys that were were killed because of that, because everybody else fell in line, right. and that goes right for the hierarchy. There being one boss, one leader. You know what I'm saying? Like there was no. You know, uh, there was never a, a thought of trying to take out a cardo or anything. But when you had people in New York that were as they thought they were as powerful as the next guy, and everybody wanted to be the boss of all bosses, then you had these power struggles that you never had in Chicago. Yeah, that's true too. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty um pretty damn interesting. Red Wimets uh, on here, and he's saying that the glass tube is true. He's like, that, he said that is true. So. <laughs> yeah, now, that's, now, we've heard torture and we've heard everything, but that's something no, man, insane. That's, that's, that's another that's, level. Yeah, that's awful. Uh, I, I heard that as a kid. I heard that yeah. story of that happening, but I heard it happening to POWs, you know, in Vietnam. That was the kind of stuff that I heard that they did over there, so... That's just yeah. oh my yeah. god. <laughs> that, yeah. that, that gives another meaning to like pissing razor blades. <laughs> pissing yeah. oh man. And then you get done doing all that and you know, torturing somebody, and then uh hey, let's go get some pasta, you know. <laughs> Sit down yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, how yeah. they they just were able to turn that on and off, I guess, you know, and be being around it their whole lives, so we stopped yeah. it. We stopped at uh, uh, Mad Sam's house, but they didn't open the door we for did. us. Yeah, you you went knocking on the door at Mad Sam's, seeing if we tried to get us into the basement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they, were, I mean, they were a lot nicer the first time because I had went there and I did a story and with the house in the background, the guy actually came out and he's like, "Yeah, the basement's the same. It was soundproof. It was, you know, pretty yeah. spooky." Yeah, you know. Yeah. So that I mean, he 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 attested to all that being true as far as. Uh, the basement being uh, soundproof and, and, you know, looked like some pretty crazy things went down there. And for the people that don't know, uh, Matt Sam's brother actually killed him. He, Mario, who was the actually made member of the mafia, he moved out of the way and little Tony Splatcher was behind him with a shotgun and he shot uh, Mad Sam in the, his garage. But Mad Sam before that killed his younger brother who was on dope and he had run afoul of the mafia and the mafia said, you got to take him out. And man said, let me do it. So he shot him twice, I think in the chest so they can have an open casket funeral. And he stripped him naked and washed him. And that was supposedly a ceremonial, um, like cleansing of his body from the drugs. And they were able, able to have an open casket funeral. But think about that. He, Mad Sam's kills, the younger brother, the other brother kills him. I mean, it's a dysfunctional family. Yeah, yeah, but it also it also it also shows you the 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 grip that the mafia had, the outfit had. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They were able to get brother to kill brother. I mean, that wasn't the first time that happened. Right now, uh, that that's that's who always got you though was was your friend. It was the it was the one who. You'd say, "Hey, come on in," you know. 
Yeah. <laughs> Come on in, you know, let's like, yeah. you, know, you could get, you, your friend could get close to you. And, yeah. and that was the, that was the whole thing. That's why, that's why I don't buy it that the mob killed Bugsy Siegel. Because if they're going to kill Bugsy Siegel, why did a why did they need a rifle across the street or even outside? Why why wasn't it the guy in the room with him? No, yeah. yeah. You know? Well, what about Sam Giancana? Like, how do you kill yeah. Sam Giancana? And I have a, no, I don't have a theory. But the final episode, uh, I call it auditing the mob. Uh, when me and Frank sat down, and he said he taught he tells me who killed, uh, or at least was the word. In the mafia, because uh, both his uncle and his dad were hitmen, and his uncle at the time at the family secrets trial, I think he copped out to 15 murders, and it's his dad who was actually the power in the mafia, but they were both made men, and his dad had his own crew um, on the south side, and uh, uh, the finale is going to be who killed um, Sam Giancana, because you got to think Sam Giancana is going to Washington to uh, testify in front of the church trials. His fi his best friend, Johnny Rosselli, has already testified in front of the church committee. The church committee was uh, 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 a Senate committee um, that were doing hearings to find out uh, the CIA's ties to try and assassinate Castro. And the CIA came to um, Giancana and uh, Santo Traficante, who was the head of Tampa Bay, to uh, uh, kill Castro, and they offer him one hundred fifty thousand dollars. And um, Gene kind of said, "Keep your one hundred fifty thousand. We'll do it for free." And say, it's, they had a lot at Santo Traficante, being in Tampa Bay. There's a lot of Cubans over there in Florida, so they use Cubans, and they I think they tried to poison them. They tried to do a lot of different things. Obviously, they ended up killing them, but um, they were smart enough to know that you keep your one hundred fifty thousand. Like we do work for you, you help us, we help you. Yeah, yeah. Look how that turned out. Yeah, yeah. And the mob working with the the government, right? Yeah, yeah. Look, look at how it turned out. <laughs> yeah, that, and that, here, and let's that, show you. Let's show you how we do everything. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. Then you guys can take it all away from us, and you guys can do it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And that obviously uh, that ended up in the with the the Kennedy assassination. You know, because. J uh, Joe Joe Kennedy was a bootlegger, right? So he he had uh, he had come to the guys in Chicago, and Chicago for whatever reason, when we watch on the news, blue state, red state, this is a swing state. Somehow Chicago was the epicenter, of the swing, whatever. They needed Chicago, and Chicago mm -hmm. was nicknamed the Democratic Machine. Like Republicans don't even run here for mayor, right? Uh, so. They came to them and they asked them to help them and the mob helped them. They felt like they helped him get elected. And then Robert Kennedy turned right around as secretary of state and went after the mafia. Right. And that created this hatred, you know, uh, and he went after Marcelo and New Orleans, tried to get him and he did get him. Uh, they went, they came and took Carlos Marcelo and just put him on a plane and dropped him off in like a forest in Argentina, in the jungle in Argentina. And this is a big time mob boss. So mm -hmm. he, he, they, the, the Kennedys had pissed off the mob, not just in Chicago, uh, across the whole country. You know what I'm saying? And it's, sure. you know, I mean, what are the odds that Jack Ruby, the guy that kills Oswald, is uh, connected to the Chicago outfit and, and running a nightclub in Dallas? Like, come on. Right. Yeah. It's just. And, and Giancana dated, I want to say, Judith Cannibal Exner. That's who Kennedy dated. He dated Marilyn Monroe. That's who Kennedy dated. There was just too many um, coincidences. Yeah, exactly. Coincidences. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. It's uh, it, it sounds, it sounds almost unbelievable. Whenever you, <laughs> you know, somebody who's never heard any of this is, you know, starts to learn about it. It, it gets pretty incredible. I know when I started to hear all of that was when uh, I moved to Vegas and started uh, as, a, as the uh, mob tour guide for uh, uh -huh. the Vegas mob tour. And I started learning all of this information and was handed books by the, the producer, read this, read this, you know, and this. And, th and he's telling me what to say on the tour and giving me a script and all this about the Kennedys. And then and I'm going, really? Like, is this really all true? And, you know, the more you, you look at it, the more, <laughs> the more you go, yeah, this is, this is what took place. 
Yeah, and then there was always a story about uh, uh, that. Um, who was the head of the Who was the head of the, the FBI for all that time? Uh, Hoover. So they had they had pictures of Hoover being a cross dresser, right? right? Right. And then they, if you ever watched that movie, I can't remember what the name of it, but it was a great movie. Uh, and it was recent and they have the hotel that's right on the borderline of California and Nevada. So you can stay, if you stay in like the East side of the hotel, right. you can stay in California and then if you stay in the West side of the hotel, you can stay in Nevada. I'm not saying those are the right directions. I don't know. And there was this big thing where there was two way mirrors and they had a videotape of a very, very high profile figure having sex with a woman and they never said who it was. And I told the girl I was watching the movie with, I'm like, oh, that's Kennedy. And she's like, no, nah, what do you, how do you know? What do you know? The girls don't watch anything about the mafia and stuff. But I'm like, it's obvious that's who it is, right? And then right. she looked it up online. She's like, well, how did you know that? Yeah. Like, well, I, was, I wasn't guessing. Like, this is, the, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's. If, the, Cal, you, the Cal Nev. Yeah. Cal what, what do you what's, but but that but what was it? I uh, yeah, I can't think of it. It was it was a it was a very it wasn't that long ago movie, right? Did did you see the movie? I, I did not see it. No. God What's the it. who who was in it? You know, it was uh oh I got uh, I got it uh no I don't know who was in it, uh, but go ahead. You're gonna be, you're gonna look it up. <laughs> I'm gonna try. Yeah. All right. So yeah, it's uh. It's it's just it's kind of insane um, how it all went down. So El Coro disorderly families uh, viewing. Hey guys, hit the like button uh, while you're in here. Oh, El Coro is my name. Oh, bad times at the El Royale. Bad times at the El Royale. That's a great movie. Bad times at the El Royale. El Coro is a great guy. And this isn't. This is. Uh, this is pretty recent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a great movie. It's worth watching. And I'd like to say thank you. I saw Reese earlier that Rice Krispie, he's a guy from my community. He donated like uh, eighteen dollars. So I want to oh, say yeah, thank I you to that. Rice Krispie. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks a bunch for that. I saw that come up. I didn't want to interrupt you when he uh, did that, and I forgot. So thanks for yeah, yeah. Let's go subscribe to Rice Krispie. There it is. Yeah, yeah bad times. times. El Royale. That's a that's a great movie. That is a yeah. great great movie. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. That's uh, that looks pretty uh, looks pretty cool. So, and if you say it's good, why wouldn't I? Why would I not believe? Yeah, you, right? yeah, so. yeah. I, I don't watch that many movies, but that one was really, really a good movie. Wow. So, uh, Ch Chain Weaver's in the house too. What's going on? How yeah, are Chain you? Weaver. Chain Weaver's one of my guys too. Mm -hmm. I'm, 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 you know what? I'm 900, not even, I'm, uh, four would be 60. I'm like 840 people away from a hundred thousand. Yeah. Be sure to go over to DPN and, uh, it's and, disorderly uh, product news for, uh, yeah. disorderly product news and go, uh, hit their subscribe button and, uh, mm -hmm. check out DPN's channel. It's pretty, it's really interesting. How did it, did, was it just a fluke? That 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 whole uh, video, that first one that you made, yeah, it was a, it was, it was a fluke. Was it was a fluke. It was a fluke because it, you know I got mad because they they said I threw a gun underneath my seat and I knew that they were trying to get in my car because I was white in an all black neighborhood and I was in a junk car that was my delivery car for my business because I had a, 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 a Italian catering business. And uh, one of the officers was Italian and she was my age. And she knew who I was. So that's why I was even madder because there was there was uh, um, there was menus in my back seat. I was going to pick up two African-American kids to walk around uh, my neighbor and I would park and hand out the menus. And uh, so she saw the menu. She called my she called my people before the before she was around the block. So that's what made me even extra mad. Like you knew who I was and you still tried to pull this. You know what I'm saying? There were vice squad officers. They got behind me. I said, they're not writing me a ticket. For, they're going to try and get in my car somehow, but there's no way they're going to do it because they don't have the legal justification. Oh, what did you throw underneath your seat? What did I throw? I didn't throw any. What do you? And there you go. 
But yeah. I have to thank them because uh, they did yeah. the best thing ever. But yeah. it really, it really got me mad. Is I got the like uh, I had they had before that I had gone to the police station because somebody hit my car in that neighborhood, and I said, "You're not going to tell my insurance company," and they said, "No." And I go, "Good," because I'm not either. When I said that, she stopped doing everything she was doing, and she threw back my uh, uh, insurance thing and just said, "You know, I'm not going to take this report." Like, well, you don't really have that. Po- that's not your just. Well, what if you have to take the report? And she ended the. It ended up becoming a big thing, and she gave me a fake report number. And I'm like, dude, if I'm paying taxes and I go in there and I ask, and I'm I all I want is a report, and you screw me over, and then when I'm driving around, you screw me over. Like now I'm coming after you. You know what I'm saying? Like I I understand law well enough. That and, and I could communicate well enough that I could probably, uh, you know, show some of this corruption. And that's what I did. And it exploded. So it exploded. And then you, you said, wow, all these people are watching this. I got to create more content. Yeah. And, and you went down the YouTuber hole. <laughs> down the YouTuber right. hole. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly what it is. Because, you know, even when I, when, when, when we started this channel here, it was the same thing. It was like, oh my gosh, it's growing, it's growing. And then it's crazy taking off. And uh, so, yeah. So what do you do now to create content? Because obviously the first time was a fluke. So yeah, that's what I always tell people. Like, listen, <laughs> you're not going to be able to get a guy, uh, a cop to say you threw a gun underneath your seat every day. So you're going to have to. You're going to have to be good at something. You're going to have to be entertaining. And uh, th- there's a multitude of different ways you can do it. Like I interviewed mobsters. Like I said, the, the finale is going to come and uh, Frank's going to say who killed Sam Giancana. Um, so I went, you know, I used uh, my sources there. And then uh, other people, I help like smaller channels that, um, have something happen to them and I reach out to them and I'll show them on my channel, which will get them a ton of viewers and get them notoriety and give me content. So it helps us both. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because you really can't make it in YouTube unless somebody else, uh, whether it be two, three, four, five channels, you know, uh, uh, show your videos. Uh, the first person that showed my video, he he took it from me. I knew my content was good, and uh, it had thirty five thousand views in in three hours. And that's only what I could see. When something's going up that big, it's really got probably like fifty or sixty. YouTube's not telling you um, real time views. So he he just took without asking me, and in he got 60,000 in three hours, probably is what it really was. So I, knew I, so I knew I was on to something, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that was, that was a video where they, I was, we were sitting, we were on the West side in a really, really dangerous neighborhood. And uh, the cops were smoking in the, the police cars. And I, I walked up to them. They didn't see me coming. I had a camera in my hand. Now this is a, uh, this is a neighborhood where, where people run from the cops. No one, no one, ever goes up to the cops right? right so they think they're kings they're smoking and they're not and i got the camera and he goes whoa i go uh are you smoking in a city vehicle he goes who are, he goes who are you i go uh, it really doesn't matter who are you do you have an id he goes i'm the police i go fantastic rule 38 cpd policies and directives you're required to give your name rank and star number to any member of the department and any member of the cuny community on or off duty so, like, I knew I, I had known I had memorized uh, CPD policies and procedures, and uh, uh, well, he goes, "I'm the police." I go, "Fantastic!" And then you really need to give me your ID, and he gave it to me, and then they took off, and then another guy got out. And he was yelling at me, but he got out with a cigarette in his hand. So right. it was just, uh, well, yeah, it was, yeah, it's the, entertaining. It's entertaining. If anything, yeah, else, if nothing else, is entertaining. He had the cigarette hanging out of the vehicle. His hand was outside the vehicle when you the walked up. And he said, "You have, yeah, you have a cigarette." And he said, "It's not in the vehicle." <laughs> yeah, exactly. I go, "You're not allowed to smoke in a vehicle. Are you allowed to smoke in a city vehicle?" He goes, "It's not in the vehicle." And then I pan back and you see the cigarette hanging out of the vehicle. So he's just got his hand out the window with the cigarette out. 
I'm like, I could have swore I just saw you take a puff of it inside the vehicle. So you're going to hold it outside the whole time? And then they took off. And I think they radioed to the guys behind them because they couldn't do nothing with me. Right. Uh, and they radioed to the guys behind them. And the guys behind them wanted to give me a ticket for uh, standing in the street and blocking traffic, even though no traffic tried to come by. And mm -hmm. uh, they wanted to give my friend a ticket for jaywalking. But uh, there's no jaywalking on residential streets in Chicago. And we knew these laws. They just yeah. didn't. Right, so, right. Everything they tried to come at us with was just whatever. All right, I'm I'm gonna ask who's who's Peabody. That's the <laughs> that's the that's that. So and it was because of that time, like I got into this circular argument with the officer, um, because I got so emotional, right? Mm -hmm. I, and I let my emotions take over. And I'm like, dude, I can't do that because that was such a good video for the first eighty percent. But once I got emotionally involved, I couldn't, I couldn't keep my head straight. So mm -hmm. it's just a, it's 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 a character that I made up, where I talk, uh, well, welcome to the murder capital where we murder for capital. We celebrate good news with a homicide, bad news with a double. I talk like that, but it's a much more slowed down. Uh, manner of speech and i do things that i would never do like we're on the west side in the level 10 violence zone and there's uh two officers and a lieutenant talking and i walk up to him i go what's going on guys what's i go uh what's going on guys what's the talk around the water cooler today can i take part now as a grown man i would never go up to three other people that i don't know and say can i take part in your conversation like that would never happen so no matter what they say to me or, or do to, it's not me like, you can make fun of me all you want. I don't care. So I was able to just create this thing that I would just run circles around these cops. You know what I'm saying? Because I would never get mad. And I knew all the laws and I knew all the CPD's policies and procedures. And they would just get mad and angry and yell. And I would just run circles around them. And it became very, very entertaining. So it, it, it kind of caught on. So Reagan Peabody is uh, my reporter on my uh, channel he's your reporter he's the, he's the reporter on, he's the on on-site reporter okay but uh yeah he's just uh he may be he may be me he may not be me no actually he's a different person let's just say that maybe he's me maybe he's not who knows no one's ever seen him on camera okay so maybe he is you Did maybe you he is me maybe he's not maybe i just do a good impression of him Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> you figured it out. I had to ask because El Coro's like, you got to ask. Ask him, what's this? Mob yeah, Candy yeah, Historian, yeah, yeah. thank you. And uh, Mob Candy Historian, uh, can't wait to hear about the Skittles murders. That's uh, wonderful. The M&M &M murders? The Skittles oh, murders? The Sk yeah. M &M murders? Yeah, you got it? Yeah, the M&M &M murders. He's waiting to hear about the Skittles murders. Well, I mean, did, was it been watching since the beginning? Because we it's, we talked about it. Oh, we did. We went through the whole thing. So if you were just joining in, you could start at the uh, the beginning, and we, uh, yeah, we talk about it. Mickey Griggs, you wanted to be a YouTuber one day, and uh, if you do, go over to my other channel, MacGyvered Media, and you can join that channel. Check it out. It's all about how to start a YouTube channel, and I'm going to be posting how I make the videos, edit the videos. So um, so check that out. If you yeah. want to, you want to get into being a YouTuber. I mean, it worked out great for DPN. I mean, you you know, you, you just, you hit something content that people wanted to see that was in exploded and uh, yeah. And you're going to be yeah. at a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand, right? Yeah. I'll be at a hundred thousand. I mean, before February ends in the next couple of days. Nice. And I think when you hit that, you get an actual person over there uh, at YouTube yeah. to work with directly. Yeah. yeah, you hit the silver, you hit the silver club. So everything's like if from zero to a hundred is emerald. I'm not; these aren't the real names, but uh, let's say emerald. And then a uh, hundred to a thousand is the ruby club, and then a thousand to ten thousand is whatever, and then ten thousand. To nine hundred, and then after a hundred thousand, you're in silver. That's when they mail you the silver play button. But every step, you get a new thing. Like you could go live after a thousand, and then you can do posts after ten thousand or whatever. 
but then you get uh, at, at 100,000, you're supposed to, I don't know what it's like now with um, the bird flu, but you're supposed to be able to actually have your own customer service person you could talk to at uh, Google, mm -hmm. you know, because now when, if you don't understand something or you don't know something, you're just, you're, 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 you're talking to a Google forum, which is just other creators that are giving you advice. You're, you're not, you're not able to talk to a Google. There's nobody, even though you're in business with them, you're not able to talk to anybody from Google. Right. You, you know, know? what, well, 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 that's the case. And if you get, and then here's the thing too, what we're creating right here is, is, is content we're creating. We aren't showing anything uh, that, you know, that that's like, like a movie clip or something, for instance. Mm. I did that the other day. Was still, what were we were talking about, for, uh, we were talking about the, uh, the Bluestein um, killing here in, in Vegas. It was in the, yeah. depicted in the movie Casino. Well, I played, I don't know, 15 seconds of the movie in a, you know, like a, like a reaction yeah. video. All right. Uh, uh. And, uh, it went live. Well, it was live. So I monetized it when it was done and I got a, a strike. Now I didn't get a copyright strike. I got a ineligible video is ineligible unless you trim this piece out or whatever. So I trimmed it out. Yeah, I did yeah, another yeah. video and I played a little clip of CSI. Maybe it was uh, too long. Maybe it was, you know, 30 yeah, seconds that, and you can only do yeah. 10, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. but there's yeah. funky rules. There's no, there's no book and there's no rule no. book. And they're always changing the rules. Exactly, exactly. They say yeah. don't try try not to make it more than fifteen seconds, and you pay twelve seconds, and they get they they give you. Uh, and what it is, it's not a copyright strike. It could be a copyright strike, mm -hmm. which is, if you get three copyright strikes, that's it. You're done. You're done. But it, it's that now, uh, casino or the whoever owns casino because they did it to me too when I did the. I did a story about the guy with the getting stabbed in the eyeball that mm -hmm. the whole story between me and Frank, when I did that video, I did the scene where he got stabbed with the, in the pen in the eyeball. And I thought I made it under enough seconds, but I didn't. So I can't monetize that video. I can monetize it, but I'm not getting any of the money. The, uh, the casino, whoever made casino gets all the money. Now that video was a half an hour long. And 18 seconds of it was a clip from Casino. Right. But they get all the money from that video. Yeah, that's something I'm learning as far as doing these live broadcasts, which I think are are, are the, really, for me, are working out as far as creating content. It's a little it's a little less work, you might say, because I'm not sitting there editing. Yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I did the the uh, Colada commemorative tour videos and they, each one was 20 or 30 minutes long. And those, I, I kid you not, they took me like 40 hours, each one of them to build. I that, mean, that, yeah, that's what people don't understand. It's, it's like, a lot of it, Oh, that, it's, it's it, You could go out there and I call it guerrilla reporting where I go out there with a scanner and okay there's a officer involved shooting at 14th and Karloff and I'll go there and you know you get all the content but you know you might got an hour and a half of content people don't want to watch an hour and a half video they don't even if they see an hour and a half video they're not even clicking on it like the sweet spot is somewhere between 12 and 17 minutes right you know so you got to kind of condense the best parts of it down and editing it is it, no matter what, editing it is the hardest part. Mm -hmm. It takes up the not the hard. It takes up the most time. Right, it does, and it's uh, it's it's very time consuming. So it's uh, but I do enjoy creating videos. Uh, I, I really do, but it's uh, it, it's really time consuming. So yeah. Anyhow, speaking of an hour, we've been on almost an hour. And uh, I don't want to go too much longer here, and I don't want to take up too much of your day. But thank you for uh, doing this with me. Well, yeah, um, no, I appreciate you by all means. I appreciate you uh, uh, um, asking me to do it. Anybody who's here from uh, my uh, 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 from my channel, please just hit the subscribe button. It only takes a second. Yeah, and, and hit the like button. Great content. If you go back just watching all those oh. Frank's videos, I feel jealous that you get to do that for the first time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like all those videos you and Frank made when you started this channel, like I'm jealous of everybody who's never seen those because they get to see it from the beginning. So, so here's what I spent my day yesterday doing. 
I sat in front of my computer yesterday and I reorganized this channel. Um, the channel's name was Coffee with Colada originally. After Frank passed, uh, I left it Coffee with Colada for a few months. And then people started getting confused because they land on the channel and they go, well, you know, this is great. subscribe. And then they'd start leaving messages and then they go, oh, man, you know, didn't know because so it was kind of misleading. And I said, I better change the name. But what I did was I reorganized all the videos yesterday. I went through from video number one when I when I talked to Frank on the phone and said, let's do this YouTube thing. And he said, OK, I said, then I'm coming over right now. And I went over to his place. I had no equipment. OK, all I, I had this. That was it. And I. I just said, okay, say, tell me who you are. And, da, 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 and we made the first trailer, which is like two minutes long. And then I went over the next day and I said, well, let's, let's talk about this, this and that. Right. And I posted another video and another. Video. And anyway, I put them all in order one to a hundred. I literally made a hundred videos with that's, that's like a video every three days, right. Over the course of a year. Um, three to four days, whatever. But anyway, yeah. it's, yeah, it's, uh, they're all there. So you can watch them. You can start at the beginning and go right on through and see all of them because uh, some people haven't. So I made a playlist anyway for it. And uh, I'm going to be making a new trailer for the channel next, letting people know, hey, this is what this is. And if you want to see this, go over here. And if you want to see that, go over here. So yeah. anyway. And he's I, a hell of a storyteller. Like I, like uh, I said, I'm jealous of... Uh, you might watch, uh, there's a lot of mob channels out now, whether it be Sammy the Bull. I still think Frank is the best storyteller out of all of them. Out of all yeah. the channels, Frank's the best storyteller. Yeah. And uh, I'm not saying that because he's from where I'm from. He's the best storyteller. I'm, I'm, I'm not being biased, but Frank, the thing about Frank is that I think he told the story so many times, you know, book signings, you name it. And then, and then the last couple of years, him doing tours, uh, he got to tell it over and over and over and over and got, he became a very good uh, storyteller. Hey, Joe, Joe, Joe Collada's on right now. How's it going, Joe? What's up, <laughs> Thanks Joe? for stopping by. Yeah. <laughs> How, and uh, how about how about that uh, that Gianni Russo like taking shots at Frank when he's oh, going like man that, come on come the good on. the good the good thing about it is nobody believes him and nobody if you go to all the different comments nobody believes that guy no no nobody does it's 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 insane uh, but so then again some of his stories are you listen to it and you're just like what the you know. Where, yeah. where did this guy? Yeah, but no, him taking shots was uh was was uh yeah that was that was pretty shitty. Let's just say it, you know. It, it's, yeah, uh, I don't remember him doing that when he was alive, and uh, there were he there were stories of him in there about about Frank coming into State Street and stuff. But he, uh, I I think he treaded a lot light a lot lighter when he was alive. Yeah, I I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Hey. Anyhow, I know when this thing, when this, when we started putting these videos up and when you said to me, you called me and said, Hey, you got to get tube buddy. You got to get blue, uh, social media, blue book. You need to all this stuff. And I, and, and Allie helped me a tremendous amount because she's the one who sat there and retagged, you know, the, the 25 videos of whatever we already had, you know, put up. Yeah. And as soon as that happened, Everything just exploded. You even said you saw it on your videos. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, I, my you, you, yeah. My Spalacho video exploded off your uh, off your video. You know what it's I'm saying? It's crazy. It's because I knew you had the content, but like I said before, unless somebody that knows the game is willing to help you, it's yeah. almost it, not almost impossible. Like you could have read all that stuff, but you'd have to figure out what works and what doesn't, and that would. You know what I'm saying? At what point uh, you go through all the stuff that didn't work, do you just end up saying it's not going to work? You have yeah. to have, like, somebody. I knew you had the content. And and Frank, the way he talked, he talked about, like, ways that I would talk about. I think it was when he told, real quick, he told a story about um, Casino when he was making fun of or, or busting the guy's chops that was dating Sharon Stone. And he said... As soon as this movie wraps, it's going to be a wrap 
between you and her. Like, and I was laughing. I'm like, that's how like me and my friends talk. But like, if I were to say that to somebody now oh, in my community, they wouldn't get it. Like, and they would might probably would. I don't know. What did, what did was, he say? He was talking about Sharon Stone, and he said, "Yeah." He said, "What are you doing hanging out the the guy who was she was dating?" Right? Yeah. As soon yeah, as yeah. this thing's a wrap, she's gonna hand you your walking papers. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. As soon as this movie wraps, you're a wrap. <laughs> and yeah. and I was like, dude, that's hilarious. But that's exactly <laughs> how me and my friends would talk to each other, bust right. each other's chops like that. But I just, I, I felt like I couldn't do that with my friends now. So I was like, there was something about it that just, it, it, it made me, it, it reminded me of growing up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's what, that, that, that was the first, I guess, video or that. And I'm like, I, everybody's got to see this. Like, everybody's got to see this. This is a hit. And that's right. when we, we started conversating. Yep. Yep. And, uh. And again, I thank you for that because that's what really got this thing going and, and helped me understand how to how to create and not just create content, but how to get that content out there for people to uh, to see it. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Joe Collada says Gianni Russo couldn't walk in my brother's piss. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> see, it's 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 like that. It's like that Joe Collada. That's exactly the just the way that the way you say things, right? Because yeah, yeah, who yeah, else yeah. would say that guy couldn't walk through my brother's piss? You know, what I yeah, mean? yeah. But there was a, there was a there was what what was the other one? They would they would trip over. He said, uh, "The if these guy if my brother was alive." They trip over each other's dicks just to shake yeah. his hand. Yeah, they take a ride with him in his car. They trip over his dick. Uh, trip over they, their dicks. <laughs> just to pat him on the back. Yeah, right. Oh yeah. my gosh. It's just it's just stuff like that that you fucking that that is just it's yeah. funny because it, it there is just something about it, right? When you've grown up in that neighborhood and stuff, yeah. and you hear that stuff, it's like <laughs> it's fucking funny. I don't know yeah. how to explain it. Other than yeah. that, no, yeah. it's people in Chicago. Uh, people in Chicago, uh, they, they just they have their own way of speaking, I guess. You yeah, know, yeah. And why, when you get somebody that's you know, I mean, when somebody says one, two, three, you're <laughs> you know, you're from Chicago, you know, that that is such a, a, a colloquialism, uh, the whole tree, uh. Right. Yeah, that, yeah. When I was a kid, there was a magic trick that I used to do that. And, and it would all, I guess it only work in Chicago, but you would, you'd have somebody pick a card and they would pick the three of hearts. And then, and then you'd say, I'm going to find your card and all, and you'd throw it down and you'd say, what's your card? And they'd say the three of hearts. You say the tree of hearts. That's right. And you turn it over and it'd be a picture of a tree with hearts hanging from it on the, so it was <laughs> the, the yeah. tree, one, two, three. Yeah. Did John. You, did did you did you see that 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 uh, video I, I I sent to you and it showed uh, Anthony Spalatro was on Hill Street Blues or something? Oh yeah 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 you showed you that video where he was on uh but they they said it was Anthony they said that it was oh, no, no, Anthony. No, 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 it was Anthony. It was, well, Anthony, was it? Buddy. I thought it was Michael that was the one who was all into the movies. Yeah, and Michael all of that, was right? the one that I was in the. They might have got it wrong, but I couldn't figure out which one it was. But I know he it was he was a cop because of the way he talked. He said, "Put right. your hands in there." Okay, guys, put your hands in the air. That's how yeah. he said it. I'm like, oh, that, it's him. Because because the guy that looked like Anthony Spotter, the the robber. But when the cop talked, I'm like, oh, that. Unless the cop from Chicago too. Yeah. No. It's it's uh, yeah. Magnum PI. That was a Magnum PI. Right? Yeah. Yeah. He was a Magnum PI. Hey, hey, Byron, thanks, man. Uh, Joe Joe Collada, uh, Johnny played the part. My brother was the part. That is very true. And you're also correct that it is uh, easy to talk about someone when they're not here, because uh, I bet you he'd be tra he he was he did tread a lot lighter when when Frank was around. So yeah. So and, right, and, so and if you don't know what talking about he he was the guy we're talking about was uh, uh, who was the he he was in he was in Goodfellas not Goodfellas uh, the Godfather. He was yes, the guy right. that set, set up Sonny. He's the one that beat up Sonny's sister, the daughter mm -hmm. of the, the, the. He was the husband in the big wedding scene. Right. So that he's got. He's a, a half a gangster or a wannabe gangster. Yeah. 
Um, hey, uh, uh, Red just asked, uh, who do you think, DPN, who do you think killed Sam Giancana? Well, I can't, I can't say who I think was. I, I mean, I, it's on the, it's on the finale. But I'll tell you this. I don't think it was, um, I don't think it was his best friend who was there. Who was his best friend that was there that day? Butch Blasey? Yeah, I don't think it was Butch Blasey. The person who did it is probably the only person he would open the door for because he would never think this person would do it. Let's right. I'll just leave it there. Okay. All right. Well, I can't wait till you uh till you put that video up and uh <laughs> and hear what your thoughts are. So Oh, it's not my thoughts. It's uh, it's Frank uh, Collada, Frank Collada, Frank Calabrese's thoughts. Okay, and right. what he heard from his dad. Wow. Well, um, thank you for coming on again. I appreciate well, it. Thank and, you for having uh, me. No, and and guys, one one more time, hit the like button. I say guys. There may be some girls watching, but I say guys because. Honestly, when you said it earlier, you said that it, it not a lot of women get into the whole mob thing. Um, on my channel, it's 5% female out of all the views, 5% are female. So I'm kind of crazy. I'm 8%, 8%, 8 females. Wow. Interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. Any, I could talk about YouTube for days, but anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning in today. Thank you very much for, uh, for hanging out all of you that did. Cause some of you have been on here since the beginning of this, and this is over an hour. So thanks for doing that guys really do appreciate it. And, uh, DPN, maybe we could uh, do this again sometime. Yeah. Maybe we'll do it on my channel. We did do it. Hey, on, like, we did yeah, do it we on did. your channel. Yeah, we did. Yeah. We did it. We did Tony Cardo's mansion. We watched yeah. to Tony Cardo's mansion. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we could do something to change it up or do something maybe, uh, I don't know. We'll talk about it, though. Anyway, thanks again. And, uh, guys, go over to DPN. Be sure to uh, subscribe. And, uh, and uh, you guys have a great day. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks, guys.